Hello, this is Douglas Robinson with DevEdit Software, and in this video we're going to talk again about using the Sharewell API uh, and the Insomnia REST client. Uh, previously I'd done a video on how we could use Fiddler and Insomnia for testing the API, and it was pointed out to me, I realized shortly after the video was posted, that I forgot to go over a very neat feature of the Insomnia REST client here, and that is that you can actually have it set up to grab OAuth credentials or a token automatically. So when you are setting up a request within Sharewell, whether it's a GET or a POST or anything, if you want your request to automatically get tokens and you don't want to have to copy and paste your token as part of the header when you're testing out the API, the easiest way you can do this is to select, uh, when you have auth up here, like if you don't have auth filled out at all, this will just say auth, you click the drop down, you select OAuth 2.0, and then from here, there's something else you need to configure where it says grant type, you wanna select resource, owner, password, credentials. I'm pretty sure this is the only option here that gives you a username and password. There's client credentials, which is what I thought it was, but it's actually resource, owner, password, credentials. So here you enter in your credentials. So for example, CSD admin, for the username and password. From then you need the access token URL. So in this case, I'm going to put in my uh, demo server URLs. So give me one moment to type that out. Slash sharewall API slash token. And then from there, you need your client ID. And so for the client ID, and so to get your client ID, you would go to security, you would select edit REST API client settings. If you haven't already, you would create a REST API client record, and then you can copy out the client key. And then from there, we paste that into client ID. You don't need a client secret. The Sharewell authentication uh, for the API does not provide a client secret, even though the web page itself has a spot for one. So that's something that trips up a lot of newer users. And then from here, you can actually press fetch tokens and it should fetch those tokens automatically. Uh, I believe if you send a request, it'll automatically fetch those tokens and it tracks when they expire. So you can see this says expires in 20 minutes. It will go and grab that token for you. Oh, sorry, I'm pinging the wrong server up at the top. This is my local environment and I need my demo environment. Now this should work. Ta-da, look at that. So you don't even have to send the request separately. If you put in CSD admin, or not CSD admin, if you put in your OAuth2 for the auth type, resource owner password credentials, username, password, token URL, client ID, it'll just automatically manage that for you. And it makes testing out the API exponentially easier. And so then later, if you need to test this with multiple methods, which you might if you're doing a very complex integration, you can duplicate this. And if you duplicate this, it duplicates the authentication information so you don't have to type it all out again. And so I believe if I close this out and then I go back into my Insomnia REST client, it should still be there. So the next time I need to execute that request, it will still work. And so if I drop everything I'm doing and come back to this three months from now and I need to retest that API method, the next time I send that API method, it fetches the tokens automatically for me. And so that's it. Um, this was a very important bit that was missed out of the previous video on using the Insomnia REST client and the Sharewell uh, API to authenticate and using Fiddler to view the traffic that's being sent there. So here we can see the request that's being sent out. We can see the response that's being returned. Um, I don't know if this request is accurate because this is supposed to also send the client ID as part of the token request. So I don't know if that's shown somewhere in the headers here. I don't know. It is sending it out properly and it is getting a response. If you ever send out this request, typically you'll be sending out the client ID as part of this uh, REST body though. So don't don't take this specific part for granted. It seems like Insomnia sends that request out differently than the way that I typically do. 
but um, you can see here's what actually gets sent back as the response. So you have the access token, and this is correct. The access token is pretty much everything from this quote all the way back to this end quote. It's huge. This is a JSON object. So if you're processing this within ShareWell or some other tool where you have you know modifiers for accessing JSON properties, you would just treat this as a JSON data type and you would find the access token object and you would, uh, within ShareWell specifically, you would grab the string from element on the access token object and it would get back this beautifully long value. Um, you cannot simply paste this as your access token if you're doing something from ShareWell. You have to preempt it or you have to prefix it with bearer and then a space for some reason they're looking for that. And um, yeah, that's about it. So that's how you can use the Insomnia REST client to send a request into ShareWell and have it automatically fetch tokens for you.